On this installment of Creative Cabin Fever, I get the rare privilege of talking to a band as they just launched their career. I mean, how lucky am I? It's literally launch day for their tune and Cell Games are here talking to me. Now, obviously, I know Colin quite a while. Anyone who knows the Vibe Queen knows about me and Colin and Transformation and all the work we do at Demars Magazine, which is just an incredible thing to have. Tristan, it's actually my first time meeting you. So how are you? Uh, good, considering, uh, you know, the world and all. But... The world and all. <laughs> that does bring me into our second question, which yeah. is going to go to both of you, right? How's lockdown point three treating you? Lockdown point three is, um, I, I think because we and Tristan have this to keep us going, we haven't really started to feel the, well, I personally haven't really started yeah. to feel like, you know, the gnawing boredom of, of the first feckin' lockdown anyway. But um, yeah, it, 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 it's been all right. Like we still have our Christmas presents, uh, you know, to, to, to pass the time. You still have your, Tristan still has a gigantic mug to pass the time. I still have yeah. uh, various bits yeah, and pieces that I'm still playing around with. So not so bad so far. <laughs> but then again, it's only like, what, three days in for <laughs> however long we're in. <laughs> It's kind of like uh, time. it's like normal two weeks after Christmas still a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. such a weird time, right? It's lockdown one, but like really, really cold. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> not as many joggers outside my window, which is great for the privacy. Yeah. Although I was like, not as many joggers outside my window. This is great. I could like, you know, walk around bollocks naked in my room. But then like... It snowed and all the little kids were downstairs building snowman. So I was like, oh, shit, better, better put the pants back on. <laughs> Not really. It's end of career as soon as it started. Like. End of fucking career as soon as it starts, yes. Start as you mean to go on. Cancel immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I heard your song this morning and I really, really like it now. I just believed that this band had been created during lockdown, but upon reading and doing a bit of research, I found out that you'd actually written the song before lockdown. So mm. it's really interesting to me that you're a project that's actually ongoing and not just a release from lockdown, but mm. either is interesting. Anyway, how, like, so I know how, but I want you to tell everyone the story of how you guys realized that new metal was probably still very resonant in this moment in time. Uh... I think for us it was 20, Chester Bennington died in 2017. And then at the start of 2018, I was like, because every so often, Colin, Colin can tell you, every so often I'm like, I'm going to do a gig where I'm going to form a new band. I'm going to play an album all the way through. And uh, again, it hasn't happened. But then like, I was like, no, we have to do a hybrid theory in July. This is very important that we do it. And then I was like, I'll just like, I just get a graphic made and throw it up in a few forums on Facebook and probably like a month later nothing happened and then had too many people being like I want to do it and I say oh what oh no ah. but um and even doing the actual gig it was I think it was like fibers at capacity mm -hmm. and it was like people people still actually like this and as well like in the process I had to listen to hybrid theory over and over again to actually learn it and I was like this is actually still very good and because it was kind of it's one of those things with new metal kind of between like when it started and now it kind of became very easy to go like, oh, oh, that. Oh, yeah, of course. But then we're kind of far enough away from it now. We can go like, actually, I don't just like it ironically. I do still like it. <laughs> and even, um, cause that was like 2018, I think immediately after that, I was like, Colin, I've got a lot of riffs. We have to form a band. And then we kind of did on and off. But like in the interim, Lots of metal bands have kind of turned into new metal bands. Like Code Orange's new album is basically a new metal album, and Demure's new album is a new metal album, and Bring Me the Horizon are like a new metal band now. And Deftones are supposed to play here in June, which is adorable to think that's going to happen. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's it's kind of it never fully went away, but it's it's kind of more back now. I think maybe. Maybe, maybe it's because I'm about to turn 30 and I'm like, no, everything's actually like when I was young. <laughs> I think as well, though, um, 
you know, it got to a point where, like, I, I've always known, and I've always said this for how long, no matter all of my, you know, artsy, real, stick up your arses music friends, no matter when we go, to, when you go to a session, when you go to a gaff party, it's all, it's always, you know, like what we should be listening to up until about three o'clock in the morning. But at three o'clock in the morning, the fucking new metal comes on, always. Corn, Limp Bizkit, <laughs> it's always, every, 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 every time, like, uh, so there's a, and plus, Myself and Tristan are, um, we would be savants of uh, the wrestling scene in Ireland, uh, Tristan more so than myself, but new metal on the wrestling scene in Ireland has never gone away. It's always been there, had been their, their mu- musical, you know, drug of choice, really. So I don't know, it's just like, there's just so much love for that and whether it's nostalgia or whether it's, you know, just genuine musical fucking, you know, chutzpah, it's always been there. So we might as well give it a shot. Why not? Strike while the iron's hot. <laughs> Tanuti, I think it's later. wonderful. Like, I think it's wonderful. Do you know what I mean? Because new metal is a hybrid music. So mm. like, I mean, that's not just to play on word on hybrid theory, right? but it is like, so it's a mix between your dance, your rap, your like grunge, your metal. It's all of those things mm. in one thing. And like, there's this really interesting musical theory that states that the music that you listen to during your teenage years is the top genre for you for the rest of your life, regardless mm. of how musically advanced you are, or how many genres you're into, you're always going to fall back on your teenage years. Mm-hmm. So we're all in and around the same age right so new metal was big like when hybrid theory came out i used to listen it to it into the bath when i was like 14 or something and i would eat my pizzas from domino's in the bath moshing away like a little mosh mermaid love and life you know so like i would have seen corn i think they're the band i saw the most i think i saw corn 12 times live so mm-hmm. like i went to see them and i loved it i was big into static x as well so all yes. these things are so my soul mm-hmm. do you know what i mean absolutely absolutely yeah. i love this but you know as well interesting thing to say because um you know i think when people think of of new metal people think of you know you know the figureheads of it and they don't think of you know bands that were slightly slightly a little bit further behind like you know your static x as you said like i would like disturbed were a big new metal band for me and people have kind of forgotten that they're new metal since they had the the sound of silence <laughs> like you know down with the sickness yeah. is one of the best new metal albums for me um like deftones I, I, I know tristan isn't as much of a deftones fan as i am but deftones like music i suppose lyrically uh for me uh, or like one of my favorite bands of any genre. So, you know, Deftones, new, new metal style of Deftones, you know, is a huge influence on, on this. So, and has been for, for like everything that I've ever done. So I suppose like new metal has never stopped influencing me. So it just depends on what you consider new metal. Like, you know, there are people who consider like no more new metal, you know what I mean? Or at yeah. least the genesis of it. Like Rage Against the Machine definitely are the forefathers of new metal. And people, listen to them without the you know attached oh you listen to new metal kind of a kind of a thing so <laughs> yeah, I, 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 thought, I, I was waiting for a question i didn't know yeah 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 we <laughs> were <laughs> leaving it flow but that's okay tristan we now know to ask questions directly <laughs> No, like, I think that's amazing. Like, there's so many other bands, like, that are really, really new metal that nobody thinks about. And there was such a sub, kind of a B-sides to the new metal era. And I loved that. Like, Mm -hmm. I loved, I went to the Voodoo Lounge uh, to see Godhead, like, I don't know, years ago, right? And I ended up, like, in the VIP room in Mm. the Voodoo Lounge with Godhead, drinking Mm. Jägermeister, feeling like I had just broken the rock and roll industry, like. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome but you know the bands like godhead as well um um they're they're more of a do you know what we because obviously you're probably going to get to the music video shortly but i feel feel like the the music video for for the, the single kind of pulls on bands like godhead and pulls on bands like that as well just visually because there were so many like you know there was a visual aesthetic to a lot of you know people sometimes for some reason people think you know adidas trainers and tracksuits for, for new metal and that's corn like a little biscuit but like you know there was a very gothic um maybe coming into the 2000s a very gothic aesthetic like if you think of bands like spy chang as well you know it was it was slightly like that so i think we tie into to, to that 
end of new metal as well kind of taking all sides of new metal and kind of putting them into a little ball with a contemporary gloss on it <laughs> i think any heavy music that came out between like 1994 and like 2004 people are like oh that's new metal so mm, like, exactly that's a lot yeah, of things yeah. <laughs> like even like even like system of a down people would say like oh that's new metal because it came out in like 1999 but it's kind of like mm. well is it because it doesn't sound like any of this other stuff but it's like no yeah it's drop it's poppy and you're shouting it is it, yeah exactly like i have a new metal a collection here on fear factory are on, are on it like and i wouldn't i would never consider you know fear factory to be new metal but apparently somebody does <laughs> If the manufacturer came out in the 90s, it must be. Mm, exactly. <laughs> Though Burton C. Bell never wore an Adidas tracksuit, I would have fucking loved to see it. <laughs> Get to me apart! <laughs> yeah, so like the music videos. So Colin, tell us about the music video and then Tristan, tell us your spin on the video. <laughs> <laughs> this is great because... Um, we have done, done this um, separately, you know, obviously, as you alluded to earlier, Rebecca, we, we, the nucleus of this happened, you know, a while ago and we were together with it and we were auditioning people and we decided to just go in the direction of the two of us just doing it, you know, remotely um, uh, during the lockdown. So several things we kind of figured out, like, you know, we're really doing this in reverse. We haven't done a gig yeah, it kind of feels like we have because we've, we've we've practiced it a lot uh, in person, but we never uh, we've never done a gig, uh, and we're kind of working backwards. You know what I mean? So basically, you know, nobody's seen us as regards a band that's played live. Nobody kind of people might know us from different projects, but as a band, as this band, we've no visual statement to accompany this. And I felt like we could get we could sum this up nicely you know, with the music video, but obviously we had no resources to do it. So the entire music video was shot in my hall and it just, in your living, was it in your living room? <laughs> uh, it was, it was um, Jade's sister's bedroom because she ah. just moved there and, was, and there was an empty room. <laughs> Good stuff. But anyway, we had, uh, basically, we both, we, first of all, we both had, uh, we, we did it with uh, black sheets pinned to the wall. That didn't work because it wasn't dark enough. <laughs> we both got green screens. <laughs> So we could make a black background that was dark enough. And essentially, we just work from that. Like, what can we do? Like, this is always going to look cheap. It's always going to look, you know, a slightly B-movie-ish. So I was like, why don't we just make a B-movie for the video? For the video? Like, it fits in with the song. Like, the song is called Lament Configuration. Uh, and if people don't know what the Lament Configuration is, it's from Hellraiser. And it's the, uh, it's the, the configuration that you make the puzzle box fall into to open up the gates of hell and pinhead and all his buddies come over and you know have a great time with you <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so I just, there's one scene at the start of, of that of hellraiser the movie just where literally your man is just sitting in a in a room and he opens the box and you're off to the race and i was just think you know what like we could do this as a literal you know tribute to to, to hellraiser the song is called the main configuration let's just go you know, the whole, the whole way. Uh, and now we did throw in a few bits and pieces like uh, nods to, you know, other demons of other horror movies and stuff like that, just to, just to, to freshen it up. But uh, we were like, let's just be literal about it. And let's just, you know, do a kind of a, a, like, you know, a cool Hellraiser tribute video to go along with our song that is named after the, the piece. And, and I think it, it, it came, came out very well. Like, you know, we've had to, you know, I think, I spent, well, I spent 20 quid on it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a budget of at least 20 euros. <laughs> and you got a green screen. So that's maybe yeah. what 40 euros, 40 euros tops. But you know, I think it looks good. It looks exactly like it, it, it should be. It's a low budget, uh, low budget horror uh, video. And it's a bit of crack and it's very, very fast. And it's very, very, very choppy and it goes well with the song. And I think it's, it's pretty good for 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 you know what it takes to make it. I think it's really enjoyable. So look out for it. It's released at six o'clock this evening, and it's a hell of a time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good, isn't it? You have a hell of a time. But I'm Raising sure. the bar on that one. Yeah, we, have the, we have the little Hellraiser box, so I wanted to tag like, what's in the box? <laughs> 
I've never seen Hellraiser, <laughs> so I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think I think I'd never seen Hellraiser, and then I think at that festival the year before last, <laughs> I met up with you, and you're like, I figured it out we're nihilists, and it's kind of the main configuration because <laughs> that's in Hellraiser, and I was like, cool, yeah, I just yeah. I'll, I'll Bear mind. In see, do what you want. <laughs> Bear in mind, I was pay- that was about twelve o'clock in the morning. I was pissed as a fart at a festival, so they're usually when the best ideas come to come into play. <laughs> and you just started singing the chorus at me, and I was like, "Sure, I've yeah, I've no, I've no context for this." Yeah, we get very we get very sure of our, very sure of ourselves when there's alcohol involved. Like like every song is the be- the biggest anthem ever made when there's alcohol involved. Just listen to this. Destroy or be destroyed. Free it, isn't it? <laughs> and this is like while there's another song on the main stage at Rinner Field, like queuing up for points. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I think I think who's playing? I don't know. I think I can't remember her name now. This is gonna be so bad. The milkshake one. She's oh, Kelis! Like, yeah. <laughs> I think she's like there doing like doing like a medley on the main stage. You're telling me this, and I'm just like, sure, yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> we fucking kick Kelis's ass. <laughs> the contrasting brilliance to that statement. Absolutely, one hundred. A new metal be- song was created while really, really drunk at a festival, watching Kelis. Watching Kelis, absolutely. Nothing more new metal than that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess definitely when the cards came together. I think like I sent it to you, and then you like, I'm sure you'd done it beforehand, but this is like presenting it to me <laughs> in yeah. that fashion. It's like I've done this. It's like <laughs> I believe you. That that's uh, I, do you know what? If you're not going to go all in with the, it's like the, the dragons. Then if you're not going to go all in with the presentation, you'll just have I'm just and say, um, it's good, but I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> it's potential, but no. <laughs> Tristan Banner time over there. <laughs> It's good, but I'm a... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd be more like you. Yeah, what's your name? Hilary Devay, haulage and uh, shoulder pads. I'm like, but I don't know if I'm into it. <laughs> I love it. And I love that you have your horror genre as well in there because you're really big into the B movies. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we, we have a lot of chats about terrible absolutely. movies that are just absolutely amazing. Terrible no. movies to some. <laughs> yes. The best movies of all time to others. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, uh, the the name of the band as well, uh, it, obviously it's Cell Games, is is what immediately will spring to mind is the, is the, uh, the, the story arc from Dragon Ball Z. But I was ta- also thought it was a good, good name because, you know, we're talking, you know, manipulation of the body, body horror. Um, so when we were naming the band, that was in my head anyway. Yeah, so that kind of you know builds into that, and the main configuration, the, the song itself is 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 very, is very, you know, it sums up what we're doing with the name very well as well. You know, people manipulate manipulating you, your body, your sexuality, your the way you think, the way you feel, the way you are you know everything that's going on in the world at the moment, everything that we're taking in is sort of cell games at some level. So I think that that's kind of cool. And somebody obviously opened the the Lame configuration box because just look out the window. So I think it all <laughs> it all ties in very well to what's going on in the world. <laughs> Yeah, I also like the idea of a lockdown launch for a band called Cell Games because we're technically in a prison playing In a fucking games. cell, absolutely. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> there you go, absolutely. Put that in a fucking t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, just Cell Games, pretty much on a t-shirt. And like explain it to someone, it's like, you see, because it's a lockdown. And like, <laughs> no, I was, th- I was thinking just the <laughs> The two of us in a little cube shaped prison, like, and I, I'm hanging onto the bars, and you're there with your control, game controller, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a catchphrase, Lou. It's like sell game. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's good, but it's not quite right. <laughs> <laughs> Now, obviously, you talked about having wanting to look for other members and there's loads of interest, mm-hmm. but then you changed it back to a two-piece, which suits me fine because I'm obsessed with two-pieces. Mm. I'm not talking about the pros and cons of a two-piece sure. from your opinion. <clears throat> so we'll start with Tristan because he talked less than Colin. Uh, um, <laughs> I suppose the pros are because we're doing it remotely. Like, it's just I do a bit and then show Colin and Colin does a bit and then it shows me. And like I'm doing like most of the instruments, so like I don't have to, like I'm not waiting. I'm like, 
oh well, when I get the drums coming I can show you that and I can do the bass when I get the drums and oh well like I can't get I can't ask him to do the bass when I get the drums so it's like I'm just it's very much kind of very self-contained so it's like it's 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 a bit more streamlined but also mm. it's like, it's insane because I have to do all of it because like, so, <laughs> <laughs> because, like, I'm, like if it was um like more of a traditional thing of even doing it remotely if it was like a, like a four-piece band and maybe someone was producing I could just wait around and someone goes like we need guitars today and it's like oh yeah grand I'll I'll do that so and but like because we're both doing all of it it's it's very full on but at the same time you're not kind of worrying about like uh what? like I don't have to go back and go like can you fix that drum fill before I do the bass now because it's not going to fit and that kind of thing but then also you get me doing like programming drums that a drummer wouldn't play and maybe doing bass parts a bass player wouldn't play it's like shit, you know who's, who's gonna say that <laughs> but uh yeah i think i don't know what's gonna be like when gigs exist again we're gonna have to be like can someone please just learn this exactly the way we've done it please and <laughs> just play it <laughs> That's it. As long as we don't have to start thinking about that that for a while, like it, it'll be fine because that could be slightly stressful. Because I find it myself interesting. Where, where one of the reasons why this works is I trust Tristan to you know, as in we found out from working together in the Link Park stuff, and as far as back as we as we basically know each other. Like the first time we met, like I was doing uh, for a band of mine called the Actual Mafia, we were doing a single lodge, and Tristan immediately came up to me and asked me to be in a to be anti Anthony Kytus in his Red Hot Chili Peppers tribute band, and it's just kind of gone gone like that. So like since you know you know kind of knowing each other, we have been very very similar on what we like in music, and we're working together in the Linkin Park. Band, you know, I'm tremendously a fan of you know Tristan as a guitar player, and from practice with him, I'm trem- tremendously a fan of Tristan's. Um, how would you say this musical uh, instincts, if you know what I mean? So, whereas in other projects, I would have tried to meddle a little bit. I'm very, very happy that Tristan. You know, every time I get something from Tristan, I know it's going to be fucking class so that's a good start and second of all then I'm kind of I'm very nitpicky with certain things um and not nitpicky on other things I think we kind of balance each other out on the nitpickiness as in when we were doing the music video Tristan was just I we were just batting it back and forward so much about just even lining up the little the lip sync you know and stuff like that and Tristan just said to me what was it yesterday evening he's like listen if somebody's looking at music videos just to make sure that the lip sync is is, is synced up within a, like an inch of a millisecond probably looking at the, the video for the wrong reason <laughs> so as I'm glad he took my hands back so I think we're a good good team as regard as regards that so and you know you gotta have a you got to have a vision about where you're going and our vision about where we're going with this is, is the exact is the pretty much the exact same like you know we, we know what this is and we know where it's going and we know what's going to be and most importantly we know what's going to sound like which is cool so if we have that going as a duo that's definitely um i just like the idea of having you know a band that is a band and then when we bring people in uh, and people can throw in ideas. It's throwing ideas onto a, an idea that's already kind of set in stone and we're developing as a band, we're developing our sound, not trying to develop a sound with too many, you know, inputs and too many people dragging in, in different directions, if that makes any sense. I think it does. <laughs> like I'd rather have someone come in who has heard it already and gone like, oh yeah, I like that. That's why I want to exactly, be Exactly, exactly. As opposed, to, as opposed to someone going like, I just, I want to just be in a band. What do you do? And then, oh, because remember once I was very briefly in a band that never got kind of off the ground, but they were kind of auditioning singers the whole time. I was probably in one singer. And I don't know, like, it was so strange because he was like, it was like a metal band. And he was like, like, I don't know, like, you know, would metal sell? Like, maybe try that bit clean. And everyone's like, this is really strange. Like, you just asked you to audition for this band. <laughs> and you just come in and go like, I don't know if it should be metal bands. And it's like, well, oh, what? So like I don't like I don't want that. I want to kind of have like like have a song and someone go like, I really like the song, I'll play on it. Exactly. 
No, and I love that way. It's like I had an interview with Fires not too long ago and they oh, have yes. a similar approach to it. Do you know what I mean? There's two yeah, of yeah, them. Yeah. When gigs kick back off, we'll worry about it then. But for now, we're doing exactly what we want. And anyone that comes on is going to be coming on to mm. embellish what we've already created, not destroy or change. Exactly, exactly. Actually, speaking of doing it live, different. I think when we started initially, I'd had like just loads of demos. And like the demos were never intended to be songs. They were just like just tracks. But then when we started looking for people to play with, I was like, right, we'll have to go back and change it. We'll have to make it so we can do it live as a four piece. So like all those keyboards, they're gone. They're guitar parts now. And I'm not going to have loads of overdubs because I can't fit those in live. But then kind of as soon as you're like, right, there's not going to be gigs in general uh, for a while. So I was like, let's put mad shit in the songs. <laughs> Let's just fucking <laughs> let's have too many guitars and all that kind of stuff. And like that hasn't come through so much in this one yet because this was like the first song where I was like, right, well it has to be playable live, and it kind of worked for that. But like we kind of went like, well actually it's like it's 2021 now. I don't think there's anyone not using tracks. So it's like yeah, just fucking just put like, just put it all in tracks. It's grand. Don't worry about it. like once the name bits are there. It's funny uh, this song like. Um... It was kind of a litmus test because I, I don't know, just if you had been exposed to some of the mad shit that I'd be, you know, doing with songs like this as well. So I remember I, I was sending you over the, the vocal tracks and I think it was just a track track of me going. Hur! Oh, yeah, that's in there. <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, I was like, this will make or break this relationship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cause you sent it to me kind of like, that's what, like, one of the stuff I like with all the stuff you're sending is like, you've kind of got, like send over a track that was basically like a rough finished production like not finished but like like as it would be produced so it's kind of like this bit is big and reverby and this bit's in the background and this bit is me getting sick but there's reverb on it so it's cool <laughs> and then i can kind of take that and go like i get the idea that like it's like a weird upsetting sound so like i could just like keep that sound and bury it and like pan it off somewhere and like another wants to be in the front that wants to be in the back so i can kind of i can do something to that track but like you're you're sending over like like you basically sound like a choir of like, just, like heavy screaming for the choruses, and it's kind of like I can like that's grand. Like if the ideas are right there, I don't have to like be, you know, like can you do a harmony and can you do uh, a double of that one? It's like it's just like I'll send over a take, and you send over like all the takes. It's like oh grand, <laughs> but then I just go like oh well, it has to sound big. I just use all the takes at once, so just hand them around. Yeah, no, Tristan, I imagine working with Collins a lot like working with me. Like, it's just the mirage of mad ideas that somehow make sense and end up ending up somewhere. Like, I mean, he's involved <laughs> in so many things. You just be looking at him going, how is he still so energized? <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully that'll work when we come to play in a, to a few fucking gigs, because <laughs> I have a nightmare of what's going on. And he's just like, get <laughs> Stage! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just there, come at me, bro. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck have I got myself into? <laughs> Although you do know from the Lincoln Park stuff, you, know, you kind of know what to expect for me from the Lincoln Park stuff. Although, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> unannounced crowd surfing when you're like, so, someone has to sing in the bridge. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna bail while the bridge is happening. <laughs> I think there like, won't be enough time for that now, though. We might have to get that guitar player that, that shreds just so I can do one of those crowd surfing. It's I don't like think they'll just... be crowd surfing for a while, while. Yeah, I no, think... it'd be like a Jack Black crowd surf straight onto the floor. <laughs> Absorb. <laughs> a funny thing. Yeah, exactly. That's it. We'll, we'll go full flame and lips on the, on, the, on the thing. There's actually a funny story about that crowd surfing. That was the first year we did the Linkin Park tribute act. I did the crowd surfing. And it was cool. Second year, I was just like, oh, shit, I better do crowd surfing. And I did it, like, face up. And the first thing is one person just put their palms straight into me, fucking balls. So they like, oh, pass me back. <laughs> 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 it was like in that episode of Founder 10, the lovely girls competition, where he's just there and someone's hitting the ball. And he's like, oh, Jody's there singing his arse off. And I'm just like, oh, the side of the fucking stage. <laughs> <laughs> trying to swim back trying to do like an Olympic turn on top of them just like Whoa. exactly yes 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 but look that's that's the new metal stand so people probably didn't know because you know you're doing new metal now like this anyway that's a microphone by the way that's a microphone not anything else <laughs> oh god very clear, very clear as well that we're there for like the first round of new metal and we're still here because like the whole thing was like headbanging like that was like Cormac or Dreads hanging down and yeah. uh, I don't think 
I think either of us are going to have a whole lot of, of dreads hanging down. Dreadlock. Much of anything. <laughs> yeah. What I might do is I'll just just get get a you know one of those uh, scarves you know from the, the scarves that Taz and Sabu used to wear and maybe just wear one. Oh of them yeah. Dangle it there like that. Yeah. <laughs> and a full head of the back inside. Yes. <laughs> I'll throw the back inside and dread that. Have a full uh, full skull. Absolutely. Like, uh, like Andy Williams. <laughs> Or, the- or else we could just find musicians who have hair to, to, to play on the thing. Play the- like for, a, for an ad like wanted young viral musicians. <laughs> young viral musicians with logging, <laughs> log, flowing locks and a strong back. <laughs> <laughs> I were on the subject of gigs. So like, let's say I'd like to talk about gigs because yes, they are going to come back and we're all missing them. I want to talk about our top memories of gigs and our least favorite gigs. Um, but this time last year, I had the immense privilege of being at Slipknot. Okay. Mm. Now, what was cool about that gig was, well, obviously, it brings me back to all my big loves, same as yourselves, right? But like, I was at this gig and I always go early to see the support act. And so I was there for Behemoth and I was at the front front on the, on the left side of the stage, which is usually where you'll find me if I'm there. And I meet this guy and he's from India and his name is Adi and he just starts talking to me which is cool because I'm very very approachable <laughs> and I'm there in a multicolored cupcake dress because I didn't want to look like the rest of the people there so I wasn't wearing <laughs> all black because that just wasn't happening right so I'm there and I start talking to this guy and he's like I love metal but I've never been to a gig before and I was like well this is gonna be interesting <laughs> So like during the first thing, you know, the support act's cool. It's kind of same, you know, everything's like, you know, flowing fine. And then we're in Slipknot and about 20 seconds in, he's like, oh, what do I do in a pit? And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it ended up with me teaching this lovely, lovely guy how to navigate a pit for the first time ever. And that was a top experience for me. Yes. <laughs> You've shaped his metal future. Good old Addy, metal Addy, they call him now. Yeah. <laughs> it's just bonkers to believe that A, yeah. people think that metal is dying because it's really not, and B, that there's people out there who love this stuff but have mm. never ever been in a mosh pit. Never and now been. I'm actually realizing that mosh pits are probably a while off, mm. so I won't be breaking anyone's nose. <laughs> maybe like the circle pits are just running in a circle, maybe, but you have to yeah. kind of pace it. Remember, was that like um, <laughs> on the Rock and Ring a few years ago? And I think some 41 were playing, which is a weird band to have a pit, but like it was like me and my friend, it was like three years ago. I think we were easily the oldest. We were like at the, the threshold of like, it's okay to sleep in a car for a weekend kind of a thing. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but like there was this pit and, but it was just like, just, just you can have to run in a circle. I mean, it was like, I guess, I guess we'll get into that, but it's like, is it, is it because of younger or is it because it's some 41? But I was like, I don't mind this. It's, it's just a, it's, it's a night like, like a nice light jog after saying a drink in the car night before. But then afterwards, <laughs> because we're, because like the oldest like the oldest like rock fans there, like at the, at the end of the period, like, everyone kind of stops. We're just like, oh, I think we might uh, just go get a can or something. <laughs> Look, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the I, weirdest I, pit I was at, sorry, God, the weirdest no, 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 pit no, no, I was no. at was Mac DeMarco. <laughs> Who's Mac DeMarco? <gasps> oh God! Who's Mac DeMarco? It is not. It is not metal music. Really? It <laughs> is really tame, lovely music. Really? But for whatever reason, all his fans are mental, and like he does crazy awesome. stuff. <laughs> I'm in a similar thing to you. We, uh, me and Craig went to Longitude last year, and the pits at Longitude. We went to you. Do you know any? You know Amine. Amine is a freaking fantastic rapper, and he does. Um, he's this song called Spice Girl, and it's literally a song about the Spice Girls. <laughs> but young people were killing each other to this day. Like it was in the the big the, the tent and it was literally nothing but fucking circle pits everywhere. And people were killing each other. And we were just saying we were like, I oh, just can't down that's <laughs> <laughs> you know I remember going to see every time I die in fibers uh, a, few, a few years ago and we were right up at the front of the stage and like we were just we were not backing down. We were at the front people were like bunching them behind us you know the stage and favors is kind of like yeah. 
you know, and that, so like we had our, the front of our, our legs were like <laughs> with bruises and shit on them where people were just pu- like pushing, we were pushing back, we're not moving. <laughs> and it's amazing how when you like, when you, a few years pass and you just fucking give up, you're like, not for me, lads. Bash into each other all you want, I'm going over here. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I would see every time I die in uh, Whelan's and we were just like, we're going to the balcony, we're not, no. I'm just like looking down at everyone like, like knocking on each other and it's like, oh, I'd hate that. I would not. I even like look at the band on the stage, like, because I hadn't been to a hardcore gig before, and like all the bands playing had to have like their pedal boards, like just turned away, like not at the front of the stage, like just like right next to the amps, and they're like backs right up to the amps because everyone was just like stage diving and knocking lumps out each other. It's like, oh, I'd, I'd hate that. Like, like I paid money for that gear. I don't people near it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? This I think this is like when you when you when you hit into your thirties and you you know for some strange reason just. Start a new metal band in 2020. Uh, I think we're relying on these young people to come to our shows and just kill each other. Uh, because I think they'll be they'll be providing the interest in watching our gigs. <laughs> just fucking kill each other, lads. We don't mind. <laughs> yeah, even like filming the video, actually, I did like a few takes, and I think I did one, and Jade was like, "That's rubbish. That doesn't look like. That looks like you're just recording the song." And I was like. Or so do it, do it like it's a gig. It's like yeah, do it like it's like it's a gig. And I, I did like a take, <laughs> like it was a gig. And I had just like like bruise in my arm and a bruise in my hip from like hitting the guitar, and the guitar <laughs> would hit me. And I was just like, oh my, I, how did I used to do this? <laughs> Fucking hell, like like one year without gigs, and I'm just like, oh my god. Yeah, the but you know what? Away. Everyone feels that, right? Because I, I obviously, I'm really, really lucky. I, I got to do loads of live streams, and I've been in loads mm-hmm. of gigs, right? But nobody has a stamina anymore, Tristan. So you're not alone. Like literally. People just but the funny. Oh, sorry. Go on. <laughs> no, no, no. The funny thing. I was going to say that Tristan is uh, like Tristan. You are a fucking marvel to watch at gigs, though, because he's you know, Tristan. Obviously, was in the Fe- the Phoenix Park, the Link Park tribute with me, but he was also in the in the um, Angry Chair, which is the the big Alison Chain tribute band. But uh, Tristan is gas to look at during a gig because Tristan has so many pedals and so many. I mean, he looks like he's river dancing while he's playing the fucking guitar. <laughs> so like, and literally, you are gushing a river of sweat. So <laughs> I think that's the motion. It's just the amount yeah. you sweat uh, will be. So will be what we things, gonna be tracks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no pedals now. Just tracks. But I was. No I was more, it's like oh, I can do the string parts on guitar. Like no. I was half hoping that we get to do a Linkin Park tribute band uh, gig this year. We did a video instead, um, uh, but uh, at the first lockdown, my whole thing was just go doing a, a, a run around the the uh, the uh, the park that I live in, the industrial estate that I live in, and I literally was just jogging around in a circle for an hour, just screaming my fucking head off because there was nobody there and uh, like literally doing all of the Linkin Park screams and then I was doing a Beastie Boys thing as well so putting the Beastie Boys stuff in the middle as well and uh, I noticed that there were these two lads that were having their smoke break and every, every single day so I'd be just going around in the same spot so I'd be going around screaming me head off and from the day I noticed them, I'm like sc- scream me head off quiet head down and start, start screaming again when I pass yeah. the lads so <laughs> Like, so so there's like, least, it's like from their perspective, least, like someone inside. And it's yeah. Just like, Kra! <laughs> Kra! <laughs> Bring it! <He's> <laughs> um, do you have a name for the Lincoln Park tribute band? Do you still do that or you can take that? Oh, it's called Phoenix them. Park. But it's it's Phoenix Park, but spelled F-E-N-I-X. Yes. Because it's new metal. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yeah, why not? <laughs> no, I always thought it was and Phoenix. I heard it was a band Phoenix TX. Remember Phoenix TX? And they spelled it F E N A X? Kind of. Oh, I thought I thought you'd be clever with that. You'd be yeah, extra maybe. clever. You're oh, no. Extra I thought, it was clever. I thought it was like Phoenix Park, but spelled different. Well, Lincoln Park ah. is Lincoln Park, but spelled different. <laughs> very good, very good. I was learning something new. And then X is one of the most new metal letters. So I have to put that in there. Exactly. X, K, Z. All Z, is very, Z, Z is very new metal. Remember, I, 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 originally you wanted to call it Cell Games with a Z. Oh, yeah. And I was like, that's too much. That's fucking too much. <laughs> Extreme Steel Tour featuring you know, Cell Games. 
I tried to look it up this morning because I never thought about it before, right? But I was like, why is new metal spelled N-U and then metal? And then I gave up looking for the answer because I had to do the interview. But like, it's true. Like, it's funny how things are spelled in like the new metal age. But that's, uh, that was a late, late 2000s thing, wasn't it? Or no, I suppose. When was, that, when was new metal termed as a, as, as, as a phrase anyway? Like, are we talking a, a few after the second or third chord album or... I don't know when, when it actually started. It maybe would yeah. be late nineties anyway, think... wouldn't it? When everything had a, had a weird letter in it. <laughs> it's like everyone needs a name it? for Corn Limp is guitar. Yeah. N o o n o o new metal. Moo metal <laughs> for cows. <laughs> was that it, milkshakes would bring all the boys to the Killy's health is a new genre. Texan. <laughs> was it just this text that was coming in maybe and that's to be like crafty with the character oh really. yeah 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 that's actually a, that's actually a, a pretty good explanation mm. but then if you look at the, the have you ever looked at the track titles on the Linkin Park reanimation album yes <laughs> it's, it's like illegible code. <laughs> yeah it's like like they're, they're changing things that don't like there's one like there's a five instead of an S mm. and like what are you, what are you doing like, well, well Prince, was doing, Prince, Prince was doing that at the, at the start of the 90s, though. So I think that's just a up their own art musicians just do that yeah. sometimes. <laughs> 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 no, that's terrible. Mike Shinoda is, 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 a, is a lovely guy. He's definitely not up his own arse. He's just giving the peer from, pressure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, guys, this has been a wonderful chat. I've had a great crack. Your video goes live at 6 p.m. tonight. 6 p.m. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. The song is already out there. The first one anyway. So we're looking forward to more of them. I cannot wait to be one of those old people in the mosh. (laughs) Oh, my God. Before we go, though, you had had an embarrassing question to ask us, didn't you? Oh, I did. I forgot completely about that. we, we, we We can't forget our first heckler. (laughs) <laughs> okay okay so as, as part of the creative of cabin fevers i've decided to ask fans of bands what they would like to ask the bands like so now we're doing a question section where people can just write in so i got one question for you guys and that question is when can we expect a fred durst collaboration oh <laughs> i think the fred durst collaboration <laughs> has already happened <laughs> <laughs> Could he, that, could he direct festival. the next video like that movie he did? Yes, yes. I, I, I tell you, I would love the Golden Cobra on our on our music video. It's so gold, it's so gold, it's so golden, y'all. <laughs> you know what? Actually, that video, the video is slightly, there is a slightly, now that I think about it, a slightly Wes Borland vibe off me in that music video. So, Limp Bizkit t- tribute. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But anyway, I don't I'm know. Chocolate Starfish out. <laughs> this is it. Starfish Do you know what? 2001, was it? <laughs> uh, Chocolate Starfish was 2000. It's a uh, because oh, we missed it. We forgot to we for, we forgot to say that about the new me- the new metal thing. Most of the new metal, a lot of the new metal albums that everybody grew up on are 20 years old this year. So you've got a uh, Papa Roach. Uh, you got obviously fucking. Uh, Hybrid Theory, you've got Chocolate Starfish, you've got all of them uh, disturbed. Uh, so it's a good year for new metal. <laughs> a good year for it to be coming back. <laughs> and we'll play those, we'll play, we'll play some covers off that those albums if you see us. <laughs> we won't really. <laughs> we'll but, uh, by the time gigs are back, no one will remember, it'll be fine. This is it. I, by the time gigs are back, it'll be the fourth anniversary of all these albums. <laughs> <laughs> This is it. (laughs) (laughs) Now, gigs are going to be back, I would say, within the next three years. And everything is going to go back to normal. In the meantime, people are at home locking themselves up, listening to incredible music and losing themselves completely to artists such as yourselves and giving them a different way to launch. It's just about being creative right now, being smart and doing the thing that you love. Thank you, Adair. (laughs) Thanks for having us. We've been very, very pleased and privileged to launch on uh, your wonderful show my dear You're, you, you do such a uh, uh, everything you do is such a credit to, to artists and you really break your arse with effort and hard work and you're fucking amazing so we really appreciate it thank you and Keanu Rock thanks for having us I, I hope we didn't uh, turn everyone off listening to the song hopefully everyone <laughs> wants to listen to it now <laughs>
They're just like, who are these old men? <laughs> what are they talking about? What? I you. am much older than you. Much older. I, I can't tell. I don't know. I don't know how old people are. I'm like Listen. Jack from. Uh, <laughs> If C if C six Steve can have a career whatever age he uh, th- then we can. <laughs> and we're slaying it. We're slaying and we're it. Slaying it. We're yeah. slaying it. Absolutely. <laughs> I've I've never told anybody what my age is anyway, so I could be I could be, I'm at whatever age y'all want me to be. <laughs> I'm I'm very keen to tell people who are twenty one that we are the same and in our twenties. Yes. <laughs> technically, we are technically the same. Technically, we'll, no. it's interesting. Will we? Will like you know we're saying new metal. Will like will they be classifying us as classic rock revivalists? <laughs> Actually, yes, you classic are. Classic rock revivalists new- sell games. <laughs> I think it's like new metal in the same way as new bridge is new bridge. Yeah, like, <laughs> that bridge has been there a while now. Yes. <laughs> Just get over that bridge already. <laughs> <laughs> this is okay <laughs> thanks everybody we signed off five minutes ago <laughs> did we <laughs> all right <laughs>